The world is changing rapidly, and with that, SMEs like yours have a whole new set of challenges. In this series of webisodes, I'll be meeting successful SMEs, and I'll be giving you tips that you can apply to your business. My name is Alan O'Neill, and for more than 25 years, I've been privileged to steer some of the most successful, iconic global brands through change. Across all industries, I see the same issues popping up day after day. But large organizations have the comfort of having lots of people to brainstorm, consult, and to spread the load. SMEs, however, they've got to multitask, multi-skill, and still compete with the big guys. The global drinks industry is dominated by a number of big brands, while the craft beer sector is populated with lots of artisan businesses. In Wicklow, there is a small family-run organisation that is very successfully punching above its weight. They are now at a crossroads, and I want to see how they are scaling up and taking their business to the next level. Today, I'm going to take a closer look at Wicklow Brewery. Red Cross is a small village, there's only, there's only less than 100 people actually live in the village itself. It's actually not on the road to anywhere. <laughs> Originally, it was all a farm. Uh, so it was actually bought by my grandfather. It was farmed for years with his family, then my uh, dad took it over. He developed the, the Holiday Park, River Valley Holiday Park at the back. We developed the restaurant, and then Mickey Finn's Pub was born. We spent eight years building it up with expanding, putting on new restaurants, new bars. And then in 2014, we opened up the brewery side of it. My uh, start down here was actually just, i uh, come on down here, build a restaurant, you're never going to be bored. And we built this whole premises on knocking walls, knocking walls, knocking walls. I think it was back in about uh, 2010 when craft beer was starting to explode and some of our customers were like looking for a local beer and we couldn't give it to them. So rather than give up, we're like, okay, we're going to have to make it ourselves too. Behind us, we have um, a brow con system, which really, uh, it'll be the kind of Mercedes-Benz of brewing systems. It costs uh, way more than we had, had anticipated paying on a brewery. It was the right way to go. And other breweries are going, yeah, we should have done that as well. Hopnuts are award-winning beer. We got best ale uh, under 5% at the International Beer Challenge in London just September 2016. The award that we got has never been won by an Irish brewery before. You know, you, you say all these beers are our kids, but that child is definitely shining at the moment. We, we don't like regrets. We, 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 anything we do, we go, look, that is the best we can do on that. We want to be the best. We can't handle not being the best so we keep driving as much as we can and have no regrets and hopefully uh, the awards will keep coming. What drives us, we loved the energy. There's something really special about coming down to this beer hall here on a, a night when you've music, there's candlelit, there's a band, there's just you in the brewery, everybody's in and they're drinking our beers. Just cannot buy that. People come in here and they go, oh my god, I feel like I'm in London or Paris. So definitely not like a little old village in Ireland. Why craft beer? What do you know about craft beer? Uh, well, we, 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 we've traveled a lot over the years, you know, and we would have seen places like this, we would have seen uh, pubs and breweries in other countries. We always love the idea of being able to go into somewhere and you know, drinking the beer directly in the place. We got uh, the award for the best ale under 5% uh, in the world. And no other Irish brewery has ever got this award. Did you say best in the world? Best in the world, yeah. It's huge. We are still in shock. Even the, the head brewer is like winning an Oscar. Do your customers know about it? Uh, this week it's Beer of the Month and the Food and Wine. Uh, it did get, get a lot of publicity, like people are asking for it now. You're right. We need to jump, by, jump out and tell everybody all about it. Every industry has peaks and troughs that can be preempted and planned for. However, if unexpected peaks come, the challenge then is to maximize the opportunity as quickly as you can, and social media is a great way to do that inexpensively. Last Monday, we can for the first time. So these are our uh, hop, hop nuts, and I was just really after winning that award the um, off-licenses and uh, supermarkets start talking about it and they're wondering, can they get it? The canning is for retailers and for off-licenses yes, eventually? Yes, Okay. How do you do the canning? I don't see any canning press here. It's a new company and they just came up here one on last Monday. Beer came straight from the fermenter, straight into, this, into their unit and the cans came out. So the idea of having mobile canning has obviously worked very well at the beginning, but clearly you can't go on forever. So what's the plan then for doing for canning yourselves eventually. Yeah. Eventually, if, if we keep growing, that would be the way to, way to go, bring in your own canning machine. 
-hmm. Business critical decision making can be tough. Should we outsource or do it ourselves? In this particular case with Wicklow Brewery, they might consider outsourcing to begin with, but they need to move towards self-sufficiency at some point. And if that means buying their own equipment to bottle, well then go for it, which will of course require investment. Then it leads to a business plan, and a business plan should be built on structured and solid market research, and of course, realistic sales projections. The concern sometimes is that the pubs are getting all sorts of incentives from the big brands to, if they've only got space for seven or ten taps, the big guys want all those seven or ten taps, and for you to get space, and it is literally down to, as you well know, space yeah. on the counter. So displacing a large brew house with one of your taps must be a challenge, whereas if there's a bottled, a bottle option, alternative, well then they could definitely buy that. There's always room for bottles, so I would see that as a significant urgency for you. Customers need a compelling reason to buy your product or service. What makes you relevant to them? What's your USP? And don't rely on product as the only differentiator. There's also value in customer experience, driven by your own people, and of course your delivery scheduling. Right product, right place, at the right time. You yourselves are true entrepreneurs, and you just started a business, and the classic, I guess, life cycle of entrepreneurs is that just taking opportunities where they come, and that's how businesses get born and developed in the early stages. But I believe you are definitely coming to a point where you've got to say, hold on now a second. And holding on a second just means standing back. And I don't worry, I'm not trying to stunt your growth or your ambition or your enthusiasm. You need clarified picture. And that picture then almost becomes like a North Star for the business. And it informs all judgments, all decisions that you're going to make. So even if opportunities do come, some may not be right for you. As hard as that is for an entrepreneur, I do appreciate. Learn to say no. <laughs> Learn to say no sometimes. I suppose the other day where they, somebody rang up and they were ordering kegs of beer and said, and can I take a three dozen of your beer masu desserts, right? Yeah. <laughs> Rather than say, we don't do beer, we don't sell desserts. He said yes. We're like, yes, he said yes. Of course yes. he did. And you go to the chef and go, oh my God, we're selling desserts. And I, what have I said yes right. to? But yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's probably a good example of it. You've just got to be careful of distractions. While they, they may be incredibly attractive, they just may not be right at the moment. Yeah. Now, finding that way to say no without upsetting customers and putting them off, I, I appreciate there's a balance, but you still have to do it. Every entrepreneur finds it hard to say no to business opportunities, particularly in the early days. But you have to be clear on where you want your business to go. What is your North Star? And when you know what that is, stick with it and don't get distracted. Thanks, Alan. Cheers. Cheers. My pleasure. Lovely to meet you. You too.